view, and here he here he is, the pump up king himself, hey. Mr. Jacob. How are you doing, my friend? United Spurs of America. Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Anytime we win uh, is a great time for me. So I'm definitely enjoying myself. Uh, look, you know, it's the same thing that we've talked about before, Ben. Sam. We take these chances, and if we finish them or not is going to be the difference. Um, I thought it was a little bit closer than I liked. I would have liked a little bit, you know, a little bit more efficiency. But at the end of the day, 2-1 win. We're undefeated in Europe as it stands, uh, which we should be. You, you look at the competition. I enjoyed y'all's uh, pre-match show. I used it a little bit in my pre-match show because you you guys brought some really interesting facts and stuff. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're the Real Madrid of Hungary, and we beat them today, so they can hold that. Uh, I was hungry for a dub, and I'm you know I'm I'm satiated, but I'll be hungry again this weekend. We had four teenagers starting today, Jacob, for the first time in a match since 2009, which goes to show how rare that is where you, where you have four of them lining up. So obviously, we, having in that context as well, getting the win is even more impressive, isn't it? And so, tell me what what you thought of their performances. Oh, I've been saying Mikey Moore needs to get a start. This guy's the next big thing uh, since sliced bread, and honestly. They were fouling him every time he touched the ball that first 25 minutes or so. It just seemed like they were afraid of him. And these are grown men who've been playing for multiple years for their nations, etc. And young Mikey Moore comes on and puts that much fear in them where they can't do anything but grab him. Look, I thought uh, for all intents and purposes, I, I was very impressed with Mikey Moore. I think right, left, it doesn't matter. He's comfortable wherever you want to play him. And these young kids like Archie Gray, they're all going to want to play. It doesn't matter what position, left back, right back. You want him in the six. It really, again, it doesn't matter. And I like the confidence, the confidence mm -hmm. of Will Langshire and Mikey Moore. They know each other well. The link up play between them two, I was really enjoying that. I would have loved it if Will Langshire capped off that, that what was it a corner, I think, that ended up leading to him getting a shot. And he kind of got it on the bad side of his foot and still almost went in. I thought that would have been amazing. Um, Mikey Moore shooting from distance. Look, it, there's a lot to be excited about in regards to these kids, but the only person that I think this is a huge growing moment for, and he wasn't the brightest today, was Lucas Bergball. Uh, he did crash the box, though, on that first goal, and he was creating a little bit of that chaos where it ended up falling to Sar. So I'm not real. I don't think he had a poor performance by any stretch of the imagination. I just think there was moments where when the rain was really coming down and the crowd was really singing loud in that first half, he looked like he was slipping around, maybe nerves. I don't know. I, I, everyone's playing on the same turf. So as far as the weather goes, I, I don't really see the excuse. He just seemed a little bit, uh, a little out of his own element. So I think from from that standpoint, I wasn't disappointed in him. Uh, I'm, I'm happy again for him to see get his second consecutive start in Europe and this time actually play because uh, last time I was cut short. So, mm. uh, again, these, these kids, they look nice. Archie Gray, I thought he was a little 50-50 in the first half. The second half, I, I can't see anything he did wrong. I thought he was fantastic in that second half. So, overall, Archie Gray was was great for me. Um, and I just, again, you know, you, you speak on starting with these kids and we still get the result. Lucas Bergvall, Archie Gray, Will Langshire, Mikey Moore, like that is that is a lot of changes to these kids. And we still didn't look like we did versus Coventry. So to me, that just speaks to first of all the maturation of these kids, and then secondly, just kind of where they're at in their in their process. I would love to see them get some more game time. Uh, Mikey Moore, if Timo Werner, like I'm not here to talk about the bads, but Timo Werner robbed Mikey Moore, and that's what makes me the most mad because Mikey Moore should have an assist to his European campaign name, as far as I'm concerned. And Timo Werner robbed him of that. How beautiful of a run did he make? How beautiful of a pass right in front of him. And what did he do with it? Basically the opposite of what he did with it versus United. Instead of going around the keeper versus United, he went right at him and he lost. And then this week he's like, oh, I'll go around the keeper. And I guess he thought he was a little bit faster than he was. I don't know. Uh, but again, I'm not here to talk about the negatives, so to speak. Because overall, I thought Timo Werner was still creating a lot of space. His pace and his just being there, I know it's like, Oh, you feel the quota as a warm body, so to speak. But in, in, in a general sense, like he does create space for others to navigate. By making those runs, Will Langshire had more room to operate. Rather than having two defenders, he would have one or one and a half kind of shielded to him. So to me, I, I still think there's something to – there's some juice in that lemon. Now, it ain't going to make us lemonade, and we all know that. But for right now, with no sun, no Oda Bear, I'm all right with a little bit of lemon juice. So you're saying that you would keep Timo in the team for Brighton and not, uh, you know, no. decide to go with Mikey Moore? Because you, you're saying Brennan and Solanke are, are nailed on starters for the weekend. So who's starting on the left for you? 
Mikey Moore 100%. And it's been Mikey Moore since before uh, the first moment I heard Son was injured. Mikey Moore, that's my starter right there. Brendan Johnson can't be dropped. He's too hot right now. Solanke, mm-hmm. I'm a, it's unfortunate we don't get to say four and four uh, for Solanke. But, you know, I, I still think that he's been absolutely quality for us. I, I just like his link-up play. He did, you know, the pass to Brendan Johnson's goal wasn't a great pass. But, you know, again, it just speaks to us in the final third. I think that um, I'm really enjoying that. But in, in regards to your to answer your question, Timo Werner is absolutely not starting for me. I think 15, 20 minutes off the bench of Timo is probably the best you're going to get of him. 60 to 70 minutes of Timo, you're going to see all the bad stuff that we saw today, some of the good stuff that we saw today. But I don't know if the good is enough to outweigh what I've seen thus far uh, from the bad because he should have four goals to his name as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Yeah, but obviously, uh, Jacob, you know, the win today makes it five wins on the trot now in this season. Um, it will mm-hmm. be these are games obviously be expected to win and all that kind of stuff. But what does this win in terms of, you know, keeping that momentum going and, and building for this season? What does it do for you? How, how does it make you feel about where the season's going? It, it I would say, honestly, it's been less games, but it's made me more hopeful for the next five, six games, because the form that we're in, we've shown that we can sustain that last year. We've shown it now that we can sustain it slightly. And again, I don't like to take away from our wins when you say, oh, well, look at the competition, Fair and Chavaros. Did I even know them two weeks ago? I wouldn't, but Archie Gray's uncle did, and he beat them in the cup tie in the 60s. So, you know, <laughs> I just th- there is some history there. Again, going back to the Real Madrid of Hungary, they can hold that. But um, – I'm trying to remember the question. I'm so sorry. I got distracted. I'm saying with my that, own you know, five, five, five wins in a row, even though it's a team we're yeah. winning. Like, what can we learn from this game? And like, how does that? How does it feel like building momentum going into the season? How important are these wins, even though they're just Europa League? He's basically saying, "Are we on I, our way to a title?" <laughs> this is our year. Well, there, there's there's no shame in dreaming, and ain't nobody gonna charge you for it either. So go ahead and dream away. I'm still dreaming of the quad. I'll settle for one. I'll settle for two. <laughs> domestic double i don't care uh but what this shows for me that in regards to momentum is we've won in different ways during this five match win streak brantford we we didn't possess most of the ball we didn't shoot the most but we still won and dominated that game and then you look at some of these other matches uh uh car bag they had a lot of chances we weren't controlling of the ball they had a lot of shots and we still won that game we the continue to win games on, by the way the, correct. I was going to say the city of Azerbaijan, but also from the of them as well. But, you know, I just think, again, it just speaks to the fact that we can win in multiple ways. They say, oh, Ainge out. He's naive. Yeah, you can hold that, too. You're sitting there crying with all the rivals that were on this win streak. And to me, I, I just think that, you know, Brennan Johnson, man, five and five, the momentum that he's got, the 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 I just think, man. What a beautiful sight to see because as someone I have on my channel criticized him very harshly. Now, I think everyone agrees synonymously. We don't even got to say it, that the abuse is too far. But criticism of his gameplay, I think, is absolutely fair. And you know what? You apply a little bit of pressure. You know what happens? Eventually, you can make a diamond. Now, do we know he's going to be a diamond yet? I don't know. Will he continue this form? I don't know. Is it a purple patch? I don't know. But what I do know is the young man has confidence. And he's shooting at will, and he's placing that ball where he wants it. And and he almost had a goal prior to that, too. That mm-hmm. was pretty dang close. So, you know, he, he looks confident, and I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I guess this is what Ainge is, had alluded to last year when he said there's a player in there, and I'm going to get that out of him. And he's getting that from him. And, again, I just think that it speaks to, to Ainge Postacoglu's man management today in the match and man, man management behind closed doors the, when the cameras aren't on when they're on the training pitch, when they're in the locker room, et cetera, the, the, the kind of mentality he's instilling in these young men um, to take the criticism, take all of that on board and prove them wrong. Cause that's what Angel's done his whole career. So he's telling Brennan Johnson, it's time for you to do that. He told Dominic Solanke, they're even laughing at you for 180 minutes with no goals. And guess what he did three and three. So, you know, I just think that Ainge is absolutely working his magic. He's cooking in the kitchen. And when the when the chef is cooking, I'm going to sit down and smell it. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Love that. Just last question um, in terms of the game. Who was your man the match? Uh, that's tough. I, I uh, my, my bias is saying Mikey Moore because I just want this young man out there front and center dancing on everybody. He's just got that, that dog in him. But he, I couldn't say he was my man of the match, to be honest. Um, 
I, I don't want to say Sar was my man of the match either because before the goal, I thought, you know, a couple chances maybe he could have passed it. He kind of shot it when there's a guy right on him. I, I, I really, and I think I'm going to get some flack for this, but for me, Basuma, there were moments mm -hmm. in that game where they were crawling back in. They were crawling and crawling back in, and Basuma, bam, slide tackle perfect, win the ball. Now he's 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 running with the ball. He didn't just win the ball. He's now running, and he's chasing there was something in Basuma that was like, I'm I'm going to prove that I should be in the Premier League starting 11. Now, I don't think he was perfect today. I thought he made some mistakes, especially in that first half. But defensively, I thought he was fantastic. Carrying the ball forward, I thought he was fantastic. I saw a lot of really good things from Basuma. And I like that we have Basuma and Saar pushing Bintancourt, pushing Kulusevsky, pushing Madison. This is what we need. You, you got to have someone there chomping at the bits, and Basuma's absolutely chomping at the bits. I mean, you're, what, 26, 27 years old, and you're not starting in the Premier League? He's taking that on board, and he's trying to, you know, give Ainge some reasons why. And, and I thought defensively, again, he, he bailed us out of some sticky situations, um, and, and he really cleaned it up and, and really saved us in some moments that I thought, wow. But, you know, Vicario, uh, honorable mention as well. He had some really great saves. The defense, I thought, let him down a few times. My goat, Kutu Romero, you see the shirt in the background. I thought his passing was pretty was pretty poor in the first half. Uh, wasn't the greatest in the second half either. Defensively, he was good. So a little bit, you know, I, I expect more from my captain. Uh, but big up Kuti Romero. I wish we kept that clean sheet, though. Hmm. I actually thought Kuti was really good today. But uh, look, we'll, we'll end there. Um, everyone do go and subscribe to Jacob from United Spurs of America. I believe you're doing a live stream after this. So uh, yeah. do you want to tell yeah. us about that quickly? Top of the hour. Yeah, I'll be live top of the hour, just boasting, bragging, dancing, doing <laughs> as Deji Spurs would say, shaking my bum violently because you know what? I get I get another 24 hours to celebrate Tottenham being the greatest team in the whole world. So I'm gonna enjoy it. Uh, the Real Madrid of Azerbaijan can hold that, and we'll be talking about it at the top of the hour. Appreciate you boys having me on. Big up, Jacob. Thanks for coming on, and big up to you for the all big the pumping.